to welcome you to Presenting the King. This is a, a new show that we're doing and I'm so excited about it. Um, it's Presenting the King in all of his power and his glory uh, to send his word throughout the airwaves. We believe in talking about the Lord, gazing upon the Lord, worshiping the Lord, praying with his Holy Spirit interceding through us. That's what we're all about, so welcome. This is the second in a series on the Holy Spirit. So if you did not hear the first program, look it up. I think you'll really enjoy it. It's, a, it's an exciting and explosive thing to talk about the Holy Spirit. You know, he blasted into the book of Acts in the upper room to people that had no idea what was happening. He blasted in with a great sound like a hurricane and the world was changed forever. And so... We want to look at Ephesians 1, 17, <clears throat> because in Ephesians 1, 17, the Bible says we need to know the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of His power. <laughs> I'm excited about Holy Spirit. I've been teaching series on Holy Spirit around the world for several years, and every time I teach it, Holy Spirit breaks out. It's so exciting. I love to come, just a pipe, I'm just a vessel. I show up, I pray, and I, pre I prepare, and I study. But I show up, and if I talk about Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit shows up, and He does miracles, and He does wonders. So today, we want to talk about learning Holy Spirit, learning about Him. Who is He? What does He do? So first of all, Holy Spirit is the breath of life. It's the Greek word pneuma. So it means literally like the Spirit. And so like, like the wind, the Spirit is like the wind, which is invisible, immaterial, but supernaturally immortal and powerful. So like the wind, we can't see where it comes or where it goes. So most of the time with the Holy Spirit, we have to breathe him in. You know, Jesus breathed on the, the disciples when they received him. We have to breathe him in, and then we begin to release him, and we see the manifestations, oftentimes many manifestations, of what he, what he does. He's the breath of life. Now, nowadays we've, we've been in a thing called a pandemic. And, you know, pan, pandemonium, pan means panic. So in panic, in times of panic and panic attacks, you can't get your breath. Well, those who are dry and thirsty without the Holy Spirit, they can't get the breath of life. It's the same thing. That physical, oh, I can't get my breath. Well, when we need power, we take a deep breath of supernatural wind, supernatural breath, and we have the power to move ahead. He's a distinct person of the Godhead. He's the third person of the Godhead. So he has a distinct personality. He operates in everything. He's the operator of the kingdom. He operates in the world. He operates in the church. He operates in the individual believer. He's the operator. And then he produces the scripture when it's needed. So if we were doing a film about the Holy Spirit, we could say he's the operator and he's the producer of the kingdom. We need Holy Spirit, all of us. We need Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit is like the eyes of the body. How many times do you think about your eye? You don't think about your eye unless it's got something in it, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, you kind of, you know, then you think about your eye. But you depend on your eye for everything. If you lose your eyesight, you have to depend on other senses. So the eye of the body is essential to ourselves. And the eye of the Holy Spirit is the lens through which we see everything in a new light. We see the relationship of God the Father and God the Son 
and God the Holy Spirit. We see them in a new light through the eyes of the Holy Spirit. So limiting the Holy Spirit is like dimming our eyes. It's like putting on dark glasses and then walking into a dark room and suddenly you can't see. So you have to take the glasses off. We have to take the glasses of the world off so that the eyes of the Holy Spirit can help us to see. There's a, there's a song that just comes to me. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. See, we want the Lord to open our eyes so that we can have the ability to see the truth. We need the truth in these days. And He's the truth. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. Well, we need to see Him. We need to see the truth. We need to see the world through the truth. If we see the world through the truth, then we see the world in a different way than someone else who's seeing the world through a, a cult or through New Age or through um, witchcraft or through really just heathenism. I mean, you know, if you don't know Christ and you don't know Holy Spirit, then you're going to be seeing everything with a different lens. And today and all through the last several years, my intercessors and I have been praying, God, let the truth be seen. Let the truth be revealed. We need truth today. And with that truth, we need Holy Spirit. So we see truth through the Spirit of truth. So, Holy Spirit, as we know, He blasted into uh, the world on the day of Pentecost. He's the power. He's the energy. He's the releaser of the body. So I was saved and I had Christ in my heart for many years before I met the Holy Spirit. So I was, um, I was a very, believe it or not, dignified. I never, you know, did any of this. I was very dignified. I was quiet in church like a peep and in three minutes you'll be sound asleep. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, but I was very quiet. I, I, didn't, I, I wasn't released. But when I received the Holy Spirit, that power in me started coming out. So the part of me that had always been laid back and quiet and dignified said, no, no, I'm not doing that. It took me a year to get my hands above half-mast. <laughs> you know when the flag's half-mast, it means something's dead. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to slowly, the Lord had to work on me because we are three parts. We're spirit, yes, but we're soul, mind, will, and emotions. And body, this body, I'm going to get rid of this body one day, yay! <laughs> but now we have three parts. So all of us needs to be released through Holy Spirit. He's the power and the releaser of the body. One time my husband and I were a part of a church that had just started. And um, we were on the second row of our new building, you know, and we were, we were standing there. And the pastor said... Turn to the person next to you and pray for him. Well, I was standing next to my husband. So my husband, who is an engineer, college professor, very, uh, you know, I would use the word anal. Is that a good word? I don't know. Anyway, he's very detailed and so forth. But he put his hand on my head like this, and he started pushing me. And I'm going, this is my husband, and I can feel this force pushing me back. Now keep in mind we're in the middle of the service on the second row. And he's pushing me like this. And so I'm like this and I'm thinking, I am not going to fall down. I, this is my husband and he's pushing me. And so we're standing on the front row. So when he got through, I looked at him and I said, you were pushing me. And he said, he wears glasses. And his eyes were as big as his glasses. And he goes, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. He was as freaked out as I was because he felt the power of God being released through his hands and it was hitting my body, my physical body who had never been slain in the spirit in my life. And I was, and I was feeling the power of God, but I was seeing my husband with his hand. <laughs> so the power of God casts out demons. The redeeming power of the kingdom of God means that it's not just the reign of Holy Spirit. I mean, the reign of the King and, 
and Jesus, but it's the reign of Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit reign in the kingdom. So he's the energy of God that came and, and was present when the worlds were created and all of the things that go on. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an incredible, incredible thing to begin to shuck off, we say that in the in southern United States, to, to throw off the grave clothes of dignity and religion and allow the relationship and the power of the Holy Spirit to burst forth. So that's when we have not our confidence, but we have the blessed assurance. Don't you love that song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine? Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. It's, a, it's, it's the glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so that assurance comes out of us to pray for someone. That assurance comes out of us, that authority. We just had a series of really bad storms uh, this last two or three days. Tornadoes were going around everywhere. The winds were blowing. The thunder was going. And, the, and then the hail started. And we have lots of big windows in our house. And the hail started, and I had just come off of my prayer call with my intercessors, and so I was full of the Spirit, and, I, and my, my son was visiting. I, was, I found when I came to myself, I was running through the house going, I curse this storm in the name of Jesus. Peace be still. Winds, you stop. Hail, you stop it. You stop it in Jesus' name. I want you to know within 15 seconds, the hail stopped. And within 30 seconds the winds begin to die down and the rain begin to be gentle. So Jesus is in me and Holy Spirit is in me and he is the life giver. I spoke life to that storm. <laughs> I spoke God's life to that storm. So it's the Spirit who gives life. So without the Holy Spirit, there's no power to sustain or give life. Without the Holy Spirit, there's no deliverance and the devil rules. Without the Holy Spirit, there's no creation and nothing grows. So Jesus and the Holy Spirit working together on the inside of us cause life to come and cause us to be a tree of life with the, with the leaves for the healing of the nations. So the Holy Spirit is known as the helper for that reason. He helps us. You know, one time I was ministering in a, I was in a, I was in a, a, a city, in a downtown city church where there were a lot of uh, walk-ins from the street and so on. A lot of street people were a part of that. And a, a minister that I highly, highly respected who did not believe in casting out devils was attending. And he happened to be sitting on the front row on the aisle and right across from him, right in the middle of my sermon began to manifest demons she fell on the on the, she fell on the ground right by this pastor <laughs> and she began to shriek like a steam whistle at the top of her lungs and i'm going help that's all i had time to say but that's all i had to say because holy spirit helped me and so right in front of this pastor who who, who didn't believe in casting out devils holy spirit came out took authority over the demon. The woman was, was instantly delivered. She sat up with a totally... She was like six inches from this guy's chair. And he saw a demonstration of something he didn't believe in. <laughs> That's the power of the Holy Spirit. He helps us. Our John 15, 26 scripture when the, the, Jesus said, I'll send you another comforter. And part of that is helper. So he's our helper. Now, when Jesus said, I'm going to send you someone, another comforter, someone like me, that word another means someone like me, it meant that he was also going to be a teacher. So the Holy Spirit guides us and teaches us in this truth. So he is the truth. So he guides us. It's like a guide. Any of you that have ever been on a river boat or a, or a kayak over the falls, trust me, I did that too. My husband tricked me into it. 
that's a story for another time. Um, but you watch your God and you do what your God says because your, your life could depend on it. So the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. He's the teacher because of the truth and he teaches us the truth and he's the guide. So he's the truth guide. <laughs> I love that. He's the truth guide. He's the interpreter. He interprets and, and, and reminds us and reveals the Father and the Son. See, it's a wonderful picture, this Godhead that we serve, because the Father glorifies and sends the Son. The Son glorifies the Father. This is all in John 17. The Son has the disciples that the Father gave him. He glorifies the disciples. The disciples learn to glorify Jesus. Then Jesus brings the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals God the Father and God the Son. He's the truth, the Spirit of truth. And He is a servant. So He's, the Holy Spirit is a servant who guides us into the truth. He does the purposes of God. He causes, he causes everything, and you'll see in the gifts, and the, the whole study about the gifts, the gifts are manifestations, are out beamings, so to speak, of the Holy Spirit. So if you have Holy Spirit, then you have the gift of wisdom and the gift of knowledge. So these gifts and Holy Spirit serve. They serve. That's why you and I, we, we serve. Jesus was the servant of all. <laughs> so we serve and Holy Spirit serves through us for the purposes of God. He fulfills. He makes sure he's the producer, he's the operator, he's the God. He makes sure that everything begins to manifest, manifest, remember that word? Next time we're going to talk about manifestations of Holy Spirit. You can't have Holy Spirit and say, oh, but, you know, having Holy Spirit but saying He can't do this, this, and this, depending on where we are, like in the service or whatever. It's like when the wedding night and the bride and groom are together in their, in their place and, and they're all excited and the bride's all thrilled and everything and she's married the love of her life and suddenly the love of her life says, Listen, I love you with all of my heart. I'm going to love you all of our lives. But I just want you to know from the beginning that you can't do this and you can't do this and you can't do this. Even though I know that's part of your personality and I know that's part of the way you act, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. So as long as you don't do that, we'll be fine for the rest of our lives. Now that's what saying to the Holy Spirit, like to the trillionth power because of who He is and His power, <laughs> we can't control him. We can't direct him. We can't, well, I mean, we can. So when we do that, we grieve him. When we do that, we say, Holy Spirit, I, I, I want to be full. Please fill me with your spirit. Please, please, please fill me with your spirit. But then, okay, I'm going to do this, but not this. That's not really a good thing. So the Holy Spirit is there to serve the kingdom, to serve all of us in the kingdom, but most of all, to serve the King and all of his hosts. The Holy Spirit is my intercessor. Romans 8, 26. Now this will throw a lot of theology out the way, out the way but Romans 8, 20, 26 and 27 means he makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. So think about this. They live outside of our time-space dimension. God, Son, Holy Spirit. They live outside. They don't make sounds around the throne that were made for human ears. Sounds are made around the throne and all in heaven were made for heaven. <laughs> and so then when we pray, your will become your kingdom come in earth, that means in me the way it is in heaven, well, <laughs> what are we going to do? When Holy Spirit wants to begin to give us tongues and sounds and languages that we've never spoken before, we've never said before, and suddenly... <gasps> If you're an intercessor, you know about this. You might make some odd sounds. You might go to church and hear some odd sounds. Well, if it's not made for the human ear, then it's going to sound weird to the human ear. But let me tell you, if it's heaven's sounds, it's going to have heaven's power. 
So you need to think about your dignity. And you need to think about which is more important, my dignity or heaven's power. I love it. So the Holy Spirit is the revelator. He's the illuminator. He's the one that causes the light to suddenly shine on the the Bible and suddenly, you know, revelation literally means to uncover or to reveal that which is already there. So, you know, Ecclesiastes says there's nothing new under the sun. So you and I, we need to understand, I want to know the mysteries. I have a passion. I want to know the mysteries of the kingdom. I want to know, there's a phrase in the Bible, the, the, the secrets of darkness. I want to know the, the things that go on that have nothing to do with this world. The Bible says you're in this world, but you're not of this world. So I want to be a part of a supernatural kingdom where there are cherubim and seraphim and where there are heavenly hosts and where there are angels that do all manner of things. Listen, angels are in the Bible. You need to look up angels. We were in an intercessor's meeting one time, and the Lord told me, he said, "I I want you to look up some scriptures about angels. And he said, if you'll read the scriptures about angels, they'll come. And I, walk, I was going, okay, is this, is this woo-woo or is this, you know, too much? And so I did what I was told, and suddenly we begin to, we begin to speak and to sing in a, unique languages. You know, the Bible says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. And suddenly, Holy Spirit was praying out of us in angelic languages, and suddenly everyone was having visions of angels. And so after the meeting, we began to compare notes and some of us saw the same angels. <laughs> so he reveals. It's the spirit of revelation. It's the spirit of illumination. I read my Bible. I look at the scripture and a scripture that I've read 45 times, maybe even 100 times, suddenly, oh, have you ever had that experience? It kind of jumps off the page at you. Holy Spirit is speaking. Holy Spirit is illuminating. Holy Spirit is causing that to come off the page and live. He's alive. Christ is alive. God, the Ancient of Days, is alive. It's a supernatural living kingdom of love, joy, and peace, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. So... I'm excited about living in the kingdom. I'm excited about the promises in the kingdom. I'm excited about the releases in the kingdom. You know, I was I was in a I was in a a church in Singapore and it was their Sunday morning service, happened to be Pentecost Sunday. And I was teaching on the sounds of heaven. And I was explaining how You know, the sounds are not what I just explained. The sounds are not for our natural ear, and they're really strong. And, you know, when you do something in a group of people, they if everyone else is doing it, they'll try it out. If they're the only one, they're scared to do it. But everyone in this this room began to pray in the Holy Spirit. We began to intercede in the Holy Spirit. I began to encourage them to pray and allow Holy Spirit to change their languages. So then I began to, to have the, uh, the musicians. I said, now I want you all to, to play harmonies that you've never heard before. I want you to play. And I looked at the drummer. I said, show me some, just let Holy Spirit pray, play some beats and some rhythms that are outside. And so everyone, hundreds of people, began to make sounds and languages that were heavenly and the power of the Holy Spirit got more and more and more and more until you could literally feel the vibrations of the Holy Spirit. Literally, you could feel it bouncing off the, off the thing. People were beginning to fall everywhere under the power of the Holy Spirit. It was an explosive service. But the best part of the whole thing was I left the service after the ministry and everything, and I went out to the parking garage to wait for my, for my, uh, uh, my ride, and this young man comes up to me, and he goes, he's shaking, his whole body is shaking from the top. Of his, he goes, I'm a sound professional. I, I'm a sound professional. And remember now, I'd been teaching on sound. And he said, 
I'm vibrating. I, 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 I'm vibrating. And he just could not understand. He was still vibrating when my, when my ride came to take me away. <laughs> so you and I, we have a whole new kingdom. It's a whole new world to experience. It's a whole new life that is exciting in God. Holy Spirit is exciting. I'm excited about Holy Spirit. I'm excited for you wherever you are. I just pray that you allow Holy Spirit, if you have already received the baptism in the Holy Spirit that the disciples talk about in the book of Acts, read the book of Acts. If you've already received that, be bold. Be strong, for the Lord thy God is with you. Be bold. Be bold just with yourself. Start in your own room and let Holy Spirit begin to burst forth in you. Begin to burst forth in ways that you can't understand, but it'll be the power of God. Look for us on Amazon.com, on the ebooks in Kindle on YouTube and so forth because we have a lot we want to we want to talk about and we can't do it all in just these short times together but I desperately and passionately want to see the knowledge of the kingdom and the knowledge of the Holy Spirit sent throughout the earth into places where we could never go physically that's the passion of my heart. Books can do that. TV programs, radio programs. Let's take the waves of the air for the kingdom of heaven. Amen. God bless you. Beautiful.